Well, good morning, everyone. This morning, on Friday, we are celebrating the last Sunday before the next season of the church year. So we will be celebrating the Feast of Christ the King. Some of the most dramatic biblical images come on this last Sunday of our liturgical year. The overall imagery on this feast is striking. Israel's rulers do not adequately care for the people. So God does it. God does this caring as both shepherd and judge. But the responsibility for the neediest shifts in the gospel. Listen to it in the readings. When the Son of Man comes in glory, he will judge us for our acts of mercy. God makes us partners in caring for one another. We cannot look to God to care for those in need. The job is ours, and the King will judge us for it. So knowing that those are the messages we're going to hear, let us prepare ourselves by taking a moment to offer ourselves to Christ, to ask Christ our King to be with us in this celebration. And so we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. How worthy is the Lamb who was slain, to receive power and divinity and wisdom and strength and honor. To Christ belong glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And so let us prepare to celebrate by calling to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you declared that you will come again in glory. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you will judge us on our treatment of others. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you challenge us to care for the least among us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Christ the King have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, whose will it is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so let us listen attentively to God's word. Ellen, will you share? A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep. As a shepherd tends his flock when he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so will I tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they were scattered when it was cloudy and dark. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord God. The lost I will seek out, the strayed I will bring back to the, the injured I will bind up, the sick I will heal, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy, shepherding them rightly. As for you, my sheep, says the Lord God, I will judge between one sheep and another, between rams and goats. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The responsorial psalm is, the Lord is my shepherd, 
there is nothing I shall want. The Lord, the Lord is, is my shepherd, shepherd. there is nothing, nothing I shall want. want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In burden pastures he gives me repose. The Lord is my I shepherd, there is nothing I, I shall, shall want. want. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. He guides me in the right paths for his name's sake. The Lord, Lord is, is my, my shepherd, shepherd. There, there is nothing, nothing I, I shall want. want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. The Lord is my, my shepherd, shepherd. There, there is, is nothing, nothing I shall want. want. Only goodness and fineness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord, Lord is, is my shepherd, shepherd. There, there is nothing, nothing I, shall I shall want. reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life but each one in proper order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. When everything is subjected to him, then the son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord. O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before him. And he will separate them one from the other as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. And then the king will say to those on the right, come you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me to eat I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Ill, and you cared for me. In prison, and you visited me. And the righteous will then ask, Lord, when did you, we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, amen, I say to you, what you did for the least of my brethren, you have done for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. 
naked and you gave me no clothing, ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. And they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or ill or in prison and not minister to your needs? And the king will answer, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for, the one of, for one of these, the least of mine, you did not do it for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ kind of the last word. Christ the King speaking to us through Scripture. The Feast of Christ the King offers three different visions of the final days. The first from the prophet Ezekiel suggests that at the end of the world, God will appear as a good shepherd to rescue the lost and forsaken. Why? Well, because the rulers, the religious leaders, have sought only their own good. They haven't provided for those entrusted to them. So God promises to come and seek out the lost, bind up the wounded, and provide pasture for all except the sleek and strong. The latter are the ones who took advantage and allowed the others to languish. On one hand, that's a typical apocalyptic vision. The good will be vindicated and the wicked will get what they deserve. At the same time, the image of this vindicator is not a fierce warrior, but a gentle shepherding God who redeems and restores what others have left to languish. Now the image from Matthew recognizes the responsibility of the people themselves. In Ezekiel, the people were passive and their fate was determined by the shepherd. They are just led where they are, they are just followed where they are led, literally <clears throat> a lot more like sheep than humans who have gone through adolescence and know the difference between re rebellion and collaboration. So in Matthew, the ones sent to the eternal fire are those who refuse to give hospitality or care. By spurning God's representatives, they rejected all that God offered them. They sealed their fate by closing their doors. And the third image in today's scripture <clears throat> comes to us from Paul's faith in the universal effects of Christ's resurrection. Paul's vision of the end, the last days, is closer to that of John the Evangelist rather than Matthew. John lets us in on Jesus' vision that in dying he would draw all to himself and that through him all would become one. Paul is looking to the moment when God will be all to all, when everyone is drawn into the life and the love of God. All three of these images come from our tradition and reveal something about God, where this universe and where us, where all of us are headed. All three images see God's love at the heart of human history and the history of the universe itself. That first image emphasizes God's saving love and grace, reminding us that our life is a gift and the God named Emmanuel will always be with us. The second image reminds us that we have been given freedom 
and that we choose how to live. And as such, we fashion our own eternal future. The third way of looking at the end time goes along with what scientist theologians such as Teilhard de Chardin see as Christ the Omega Point. Christ the Omega Point is drawing all creation toward being caught up in the very energy of God. How will the world end? Our vision of where it is going will affect every step we take. There are moments when we need comforting. We need our God as shepherd to assure us that what is beyond our control has not escaped the realm of God's potential to save us. At other moments, we need to be confronted with the starkness of the separation of sheep and goats, reminding us that the choices we make will determine and create our future. And both of those approaches can lead us to Paul's mystical vision and hope for union with God and with all of God's creation. Teilhard offers us a hope and vision. He says to us, Someday, after mastering the winds, the waves, the tides, and gravity, we shall harness for God the energies of love. And then for the second time in history, man, people, will have discovered fire. Sobering thoughts and at the same time comforting. As we live through this last week of our liturgical year, perhaps it would be a good time to stop and say, how do I fit into this picture that God has planted for us today? And so I'd like to invite Helen Hoey back to pray with us our prayer of the faithful. Let us pray now for all who are in need and for us who are called to care for them. For all of us in the church who will be judged on our care for the least among us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all leaders responsible for promoting peace and justice throughout the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a national will to provide for the most vulnerable, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in this community whose needs have been overlooked or who are unknown, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially those close to death, may they rise to new life in Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions that lie hidden in our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Presider God, our protector and judge, we thank you for sending your son to show us who you are and who we are called to be. Give us strength and courage to care for the least among us. Make us worthy to stand among those called to live an eternal life. We offer this prayer in the name of Christ, the King of the universe. Amen. 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 And now gathering all of these thoughts, all of our prayers, let us Learn from Jesus the prayer that he taught us was the way to address our God. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, yours now and forever. forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we to be called to the supper of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive it, and if I will say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And let us pray. As we are about to receive the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorifying in obedience to the commands of Christ the King, King of the universe, we may live with Christ eternally in the heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God create or bless you, may God redeem or heal you, and may God the Holy Spirit fill you with light. Amen. 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 So go in peace to praise Christ our King by the very lives we lead. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And so let's, of course, understand that as you have gone through this preparation for communion, we will be coming around to the different apartments to bring communion to all the residents who would like to receive. If you leave your door open, let us come in. We will at some point, probably by noon, have made it through all of the different apartments. So be patient with us as we try to make the rounds and meet each person who would like to be with the Lord this morning. Um, I would like to really also reiterate that through channel 591, we are trying very hard to stay in communication with as many of you as is possible. So if you're listening to me now, you know how to get to channel 591. I strongly suggest that you continue to look for the programs and things that are going up. I certainly don't expect everybody to watch everything but there are some pretty good things and I've gotten some good feedback recently. So in order just to have some different things out there, take a look and see what is going on. Uh, as we prepare for Thanksgiving this week and give thanks to God in many, many different ways, we'll try also to give you things on 591, including <clears throat> a very nice Thanksgiving special that we are creating for you. And we hope that you will join us. And maybe some of those things we'll put on more than once just to try to accommodate everyone in their needs. So we have a wonderful, wonderful day, I hope. And please bear with us and be patient with one another. And let's ask God for strength during these times that are difficult for everyone. God bless. Amen. Thanks.